Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Fright by Solid Roots. It plays two to five players, takes roughly about 15 to 30 minutes to play, and is for ages eight and up. And in the game Fright, you are going to be playing as uh, specters haunting a cemetery attempting to scare each other to death. And if you run out of stacks on your tombstone, you're out. But just because you're out doesn't mean you can't stop playing. Your objective will still be to scare all of your teammates. And you can win in one of two ways, being the last person left alive or being uh, one of the specters and making sure that all players are eliminated on the same turn. Will you be able to survive the night or will you all turn into ghastly ghouls by the end of the game? Find out now, but first the setup. The setup for Fright is very simple. Go ahead and take the game board, open it up, and set it in the middle of the table for all players to be able to reach. Then, give every single player a tombstone with scare markers on them, a total of five for each player playing, and place it in the slots indicated on the board. Additionally, give every single player an allocated die and put it next to their tombstone. Then shuffle the Fright deck, place it in the middle of the board, and draw a card for each player to utilize in their hand, but make sure to keep it secret. After that, you're ready to begin the game and start scaring your opponents. Playing the game is as simple as setting it up. Basically what is going to happen is on the die phase, every single player is going to take their die and roll it. And then the highest valued number is the winner. Now there's other ways that things can happen as well, where if two people get the same die number, a pair is going to beat out any single. And if there are more than one pair, the lower pair is going to win. Triples beat out pairs and so on and so forth. When you win, you will be able to remove a marker from any player's tombstone. So for instance, if I and someone else got a pair of threes and everybody else got a singular number, then we would each get to scare one marker off of one player. When you scare a marker off of a player, they'll simply remove one of those markers from their tombstones and each of them will get a chance to draw a card from the Fright deck. Additionally too, after you roll, and before you scare, you can choose to play certain cards, and the cards will dictate what you can do and when you can do them on. If they have a die marker symbol, you use them during the dice phase. If you have a scare marker, you use them during the scare phase. After all the dice have been rolled and calculated, and after every player has played their dice cards, then you'll flip over to the scare phase, you'll check the dice, and people who win, basically based on the amount of high single, or doubles, or lower doubles, if there are more than one, or triples, quadruples, then you'll just simply scare and you can use scare cards uh, that have a specific scare marker based on the symbol in the middle of the card. Once people have been scared, remove their markers, you'll flip it back over to the dice phase and simply have every single player once again roll dice, check the dice, play any cards that they can or want to, flip this over to the scare phase, scare people's markers off of their tombstones, and proceed until they are the last player left. Now, if you lose all of your markers and you happen to have quite a few cards in hand because you've been getting scared throughout the game, you're not exactly out. You can still play these cards during the phases they tell you you can play them in. And your new objective is to make sure that everyone loses on the same turn. If you can make everyone lose on the same turn, you can then win the game as one of the ghosts. However, it's very difficult, but you're still going to be able to be in the game, which is nice. Whereas for every other player, your objective is to simply remove all the other tombstone scare markers from other players' tombstones and have at least one remaining of your own. Can you do that in the game Fright? <laughs> Find out, but first let's go ahead and review it and then decide if you want to pick it up or not. Oh, real quick, too, I want to talk about a few of the cards that you can uh, draw in the game and when you can use them. Like for instance, during the scare phase, you can play a boo card, which just simply will scare a player even if you didn't win the die roll. Instant number cards, which will basically change your die number to any number that is presented on the card. So if you roll a one, you want a six, you can play the instant six and bam, you get a six. Instant two, instant one, so on and so forth. A force scare, you stop the player who is actively scaring and you get to choose which player that gets scared. So instead of them scaring you, you can choose them to scare somebody else. And uh, what else do we got here? Swap hands. You can stop all actions and trade hands with target player or ghost. And it just goes on from there. So those actions in both the different phases of the game. But I thought I should represent a little bit of these guys so you have an idea of how they are played. They take that actions, they're die changing actions, and they're ch actions that can prevent you from taking damage or redirect the damage that is dealt to you. Okay, bye.
Okay, so discussing my review for the game Fright uh, by Solid Roots. Uh, first of all, this is a really high quality game, and this is a game made for kids. Uh, I like the uh, style of artwork in the game, I like the inside of the box, I like all the components and the quality of those components. I like the pieces in the game that are represented here by the tombstones and the scare markers. It feels good and tactile to uh, place them onto your tombstone, take them off. Drawing cards for suffering a penalty is also a nice thing in the game, and of course, all the are actually really cool as well. This is a nice game that's going to be, I think, directed towards uh, kids and families for Halloween. Um, it's also very simple to set up. This game is bam, you're ready to set it up, and also very simple to play. You're, you're ready to learn how to play this, understand this game in approximately four or five minutes. Roll the dice, play cards, assess the dice, players then scare other players, uh, during the scare phase and then flip it over and continue and then basically the last player left is the winner or if ghosts manage to get rid of everybody on um, the same round they win and 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 that's pretty much the idea of the game uh, conceptually I don't mind any of that um, there is a few issues with this game in my opinion though so uh, first of all the rules are highly unclear as, as to when you can do certain things it kind of just wants you to just play whenever you want provided you follow the basic rules of when you can play the cards but there's no set order of when you play it's just kind of whoever first does what and that presents a bunch of challenges in the game in my opinion like I scared you first and then you scared uh, you know this other player well no you're technically dead first um, before you can scare somebody or can you scare there's a lot of like little baby rules that kind of aren't expressly explained in the game but um, that being said the rule book it's probably the most uh, irritating thing about the game, if I'm being honest. And I hate to say it because it has some really cool, unique twists to it. It's got a bunch of extra storytelling in the rule book, but that is kind of its issue. When I'm reading the rules, I want to learn the rules to a game. And this one here will constantly take you out of the rules and try and make you laugh, try and be like funny, trying to be spooky or scary. It doesn't expressly explain enough with all of the actual text that is provided. Most of it is just filler text. And so I'm constantly having to go through the rules to find the little bits and pieces of what you need to do. Um, there's also some cards in the game that are extra. That would have been nice to be player aids for like when little situations come up like FAQs or whatever uh, of the like. Um, but uh, you know, it does explain the game and it does do a decent job of it. It's just, there's timing issues with it and the rules are very, very, very clunky and very, very like story driven. Okay, now, uh, now that being said, uh, the game is a fun game for kids. This is going to be a family-driven game where it doesn't really matter, you know what I mean? Like where you're just playing with your kids, rolling the dice, shooting out the cards at each other. And uh, there are some really good moments in this game. I like the idea of uh, scaring people or boo, because there's this like kind of like standoff moment where we all stop and maybe me and this guy next to me are ready to scare because we got the, the lowest, I don't know, the, the lowest doubles. And I'll just pick somebody at random and scare them. And that's kind of like the idea of the game. And then they'll lose marker and then from there on in the game they're gonna draw cards and maybe start targeting you um, what the game generally leans to do is it kind of balances itself out because if some player has one scare marker it's very unlikely they're gonna be the one targeted by a scare Typically speaking, each player is going to start losing one scare marker at a time uh, because players will want to keep everybody in the same level as them, um, which kind of typically does that kind of balancing thing, which I don't necessarily mind. Uh, there's also the ghosts, which are going to be sort of in the game. They have cards that they can utilize and throw at other players, so they're not necessarily out, which is a good way to deal with player elimination because the ghosts hold on to cards. And the games are rather quick, so even if you do get eliminated and you only have a card in your hand, it's not that big of a deal because the game is going to be over quickly and you can go ahead and jump right back in. So quality of the game, amazing. Artwork, stylization, really cool. And even the theme I really enjoy. The idea of rolling the dice and how they can come up and how you can actually change dice with the cards that you have. Uh, turn my die into a one, which now copies your one. Now we have a pair and it beats the player that has just a single six. I like that. It's kind of a team exercise as well. And then of course the scare phase, the boo, and you're not ready and you're like hoping that there's three guys out there that are looking to scare somebody and you're just sitting there like, I didn't win. I have the most of these things on me. Am I going to get scared once or twice or three times or none? 
really, really cool aspect. But the rules took me out of the game. That was an issue with the game. And of course, the randomness of when players can play cards and how they kind of all unfold is also an issue. Uh, that being said, though, it's up to you as to whether or not you want to pick up this game. This is going to be a great family or kid style game for Halloween. It's something I would actually recommend for kids and families. Like if you're going to see something that you want to get your kids into playing, it's very easy to understand and has some really cute dialogue and interesting uh, kind of mechanics to a board game, then Fright is one I would strongly urge you to take a look at. However, for you more modern gamers that are probably about my age or people, you know, adults that are wanting to play a game, this is not going to be for you in my opinion. Overall, I hope you guys will go ahead and take a look down below, link in the description to look at the game for yourself and see if you're interested. We'll probably even play this on a live stream because it's so quick and you can get a chance to actually see how it's played and whether or not it's something that you think would be for you. And I'll put a link if we do down below. But anyway, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and hit the outro. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Fright. If you're interested in picking up the game, like I said, links down below in the description right in time for Halloween. I just love these. These are really, really cool. UnfilteredGamer.com. Uh, there's going to be board game reviews and giveaways and Kickstarter lists and all that kind of stuff for you to take a look at. And our writers are working hard to get you some new content. And our top 10 list will be up as well. You can also go ahead and check our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games and show you new games that are coming out every every single week so i'm looking forward to do that with you guys uh, additionally if you'd like you can donate a dollar to us on patreon every month it does help us out tremendously and helps us keep making more content for you all right guys that is all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to boo frightening you next time did i i, I didn't i didn't get you nope nope all right